When the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing, Alleluia, Christ is King. We have this hope that burns within our heart, hope in the coming of the Lord. We are united in Jesus Christ our Lord. We are united in his love, love for the waiting people of the world, people who need our Savior's love. Soon the heavens will open wide, Christ will come to claim his bride, all the universe will sing, Alleluia, Christ is King. We have this hope, this faith, and God's great love. We are united in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful singing. Um, I've sent our sister a message. Um, so just still waiting for her. Unless you have another song, Brother Stephen. All right. Um, I'm not sure you might have one or um, Pastor Ashraf. <laughs> <laughs> you, ha you have a song? Anyone? <laughs> um, I'll have a look. Um, um, No, I've got one. We can share one if it's if that's okay. Um, yeah, no worries. Hopefully, um, I'll know the tune. Yeah, um, I'm looking for one. I know it's. So I think every every person's um got a certain voice for certain songs. <laughs> I, I can't yeah. sing certain songs. Yeah. It depends on the tone, tone of our um, voice. Um, you know, it suits certain hymns, doesn't it? Yes, yes. Um, I'll have to just look it up on my phone because it's... Yeah, no uh, worries. Jesus paid it all. Do you know that oh, one? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, we just got to really have a heart um, heart transformation to realise, you know, the, the impact of, of um, him and... The Father and the Holy Spirit, what they've done, yeah, need to have yeah. that heart transformation, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what number? Uh, I yeah, I can get that up on the um phone as well, yeah. Jesus paid it all, yeah. Uh, Jesus. Uh, it's one eighty four, sister. One eight four. Okay. Yep. One... His brother is um. I just see brother uh, um pastor. Are you, there, are you there, Pastor Ashraf? No, he must have had to go away for a bit. So yeah, he's very yeah. busy. He's a he he does teaching and because in Pakistan it is now um four o'clock in the afternoon and sometimes he gets called away, you know, to do with the, um the school and that. So he he's yeah. probably had to yeah. just go away a bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's okay. okay. Yeah. It's uh, it it has uh, four verses. Yes, hello, hello. Would would you like to join us with a with a song, one one eight four? Jesus. Uh, I don't I don't sing actually. I preach. I say don't sing. <laughs> you don't sing. <laughs> I think we all sing in a in a way, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. If I start singing, all will people will leave the. Meeting. Well, there's you only three of that. That's okay. <laughs> you okay. sing, I will listen. All right. Okay. It has four verses. Um, do you want to take the first one, Stephen, or shall I? Uh, you could start if you like. Okay. Okay. We'll just alternate while we wait. I hear 
the Savior save. Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine only Lord. Jesus paid it all. All to him I own. Sun had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper's spots And melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left the crimson stain he washed it white as snow. Since nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim, I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all. All to him I own. Sun had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, I'll lay my trophies down. Fall down at Jesus' feet. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. I'm still be still waiting. I don't know where everybody is this afternoon. Probably busy. Um what country are you in? Uh, what's your name, sister? Sorry. I'm in the UK in Scotland. Okay. Is that a South um some other country um accent or? Um, South Africa. No, it's it's Scotland. I mean Scotland. Okay, it, it doesn't sound like a Scottish sort of ah, accent. Ah, I see. Ah, uh, no, I'm originally from Zimbabwe. Oh yeah, I thought it might have been yeah. somewhere in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a devotional that you want to share, or we can share a devotional? I've got um this uh. A devotional that we can share. Uh, it's called the blame the blame game by Barbara Welch. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. That's First uh, John three verse twenty. It's the New King James Version. When whenever things don't turn out the way you want them to, it's easy to blame yourself. You tell yourself. Sorry. You tell yourself that if only you had been the perfect parent, then your kids would have turned out better. If you had been a better person, then your spouse wouldn't have cheated. Or if you hadn't said the wrong thing, you wouldn't have a black eye. The truth is not everything that goes wrong in life is your fault. First of all, this is not a perfect world. Humans make mistakes, and even if you were the best parent in the world, it still comes down to your children reaching the age where they reap the consequences for their own choices. A spouse's lack of character made them cheat, not you. And no one ever deserves to be battered, no matter what was said. When you play, play the blame game, 
and take responsibility for all that goes wrong. The only one who wins is Satan. He loves to see you upset, feeling guilty, disheartened and depressed. Instead of riding the guilt train, get on the praise train. Praise God for all the things that are going right in your life and start counting your blessings. If you've done something wrong, then ask God to forgive you. Believe in his forgiveness and move on with joy in your heart. Leave the things you cannot change to God and let him take care of it while you are com comforted by his warm embrace. Amen. Uh, amen, beautiful sister. Yeah. Yeah, when I, knew, I, I, knew was a, I, <clears throat> I knew there was a reason why, you know, I was I, I got a strong impression to to go onto this um platform tonight. You know, I don't come very often, but because these are the issues I've been going through, and yeah, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit leads, and 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 I believe the Holy Spirit worked it out for this person, you know, to either be late or, you know, for this reason, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Praise yes. God. There's always, there's always a reason for everything that happens to us. Sometimes we do not see it, but uh, God is in control and he shows us, he guides us at the right time. And then only sometimes then we see uh, what is happening in our life and think, oh yeah, God has been in control all the time because we, we're not alone. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So there's always Amen. some reason, yeah. And, and the main thing is, as it says, uh, we don't blame ourselves for everything that goes wrong. Um, no. You know, we, we always look, look to God. And then I think this is why so many people get depressed and um, because they're blaming themselves. There's some guilt that they're holding on to, but we need to let go of the guilt that we have and just leave it in God's hands. Yes. Yeah, just learning, learning to um give all our burdens. Yeah, because yes, um yes. Satan, Satan, like you said, Satan loves us to carry our burdens. You know, mm, mm. and and he just he just build builds on the burdens, and then you know, yeah, and then it starts to get so heavy. Yeah, we we end up getting depressed or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're right. Once we once we get depressed, the whole body uh, starts getting ill, and we end up, you know on tablets and all kinds of, of things that are not supposed to be in the body. So no. we have to keep praising God no matter what what we go yes. into. Mm. It's amazing also when you're feeling flat or whatever you want to call it, you, you feel the pain, more pain too, because obviously we don't sleep as well either, you know, and so we don't, the body doesn't regenerate. And I, I heard that um, vitamin D is very good for um, infl inflammation as well, yeah. Vitamin mm -hmm. D. I'm I'm a little bit low in vitamin D at the moment. Yeah. yeah. And I'm. Yeah. I think the because um yeah the immune system. You know it can um yeah. Yes. The yeah, whole... like you said, we we got to learn to praise God, don't we? Not not to um. Yeah um yeah focus on our um what's going wrong. Yeah, just focus on the positives. Yes. Yes. It's 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 difficult. When we are going through that, you know, if somebody says to you, oh, praise God, it's difficult at the time, but sometimes it's best to sing a song or, you know, just read a scripture or something that will uplift you, you know, and that, that, yeah, always... yeah, yeah. Because um, I remember when I was around 15, um, yeah, my mum went through a lot of uh, this deep, deep depression, you know, because she had a lot of trauma and, yeah, I'm not sure if gen genetic or, or not. But they say most things, um, <clears throat> gen the, the genetic factor could is, is something that um, lo loads the gun, but it's usually our lifestyle. Uh, it can be circumstances in some cases that pull the trigger, but it's mainly um, our lifestyle and our the way we think and that, but... Um, because we can, you know, we can blame genetics and things like that, but sometimes it's maybe it's not as, you know, it's more our lifestyle. Yeah, you know, like the New Start acronym. Mm. You know, have you heard of the New Start? You know, like uh, N for nutrition, B e for exercise, W for water, S for sunshine, T for temperance, A, A for air, 
R for rest and T for trusting God. Yeah. Quite mm. often we do we, we do all those, you know, and uh, yeah, a lot of our bodies, our, our minds and bodies are going to work a lot better. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's true. It's just I don't know what's happening. I've sent a message um, to our sister, but uh, she hasn't come through yet. Um, I don't know what's happening. Maybe she's having problems because she's in um, she's in South Africa. But you you in South Africa, aren't you, Brother Stephen? No, I'm in Australia. Oh, in Australia, right, right, okay. Because the accent, it's... I think, is I don't know, it's putting me off. Yeah. Um, oh, my you... accent is a bit sounds a bit South African, does it? Yeah, it does sound similar to South. <laughs> <laughs> I've sent. <laughs> I've yeah, sent... like the, the part the pastor sounds it. Pastor Ashra sounds a bit ja like Japanese sometimes, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. Really? I no, I'm joking. Around, no, I'm joking, <laughs> brother. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to tell that I. This is a joke. Yeah, you have to laugh. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely a joke. <laughs> And yeah. Brother Gost Goston, how are you? Gost Thank you for joining. We're still waiting. Sorry about that. I don't know what's taking so long. We, I like just, I like, I like, you know, I like the, the little... Um, so, sorry, brother. This is a prayer meeting? Yes, we're supposed to be... Um, uh, we've we've got a speaker. We normally have a speaker in the afternoon, but um, I've sent her messages this morning. She said yes, she'll she'll be our speaker, but she hasn't come on yet. So I don't know what's happening. And then after that, we 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 start praying. We could we could pray. You know, we could uh, we could start praying. Sister, oh, say, Hello, sister. Okay. We. We, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened to my phone. It was just missed the other thing. All right, okay. We, yeah, so did, did you start? Sorry. Yes, we've started. We're waiting for you. So am I still able to do the presentation? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. We'd love you to do the presentation. Please. All right. okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Praise I God. Like, I like what... I like your um sense of humor, brother Gaston, uh, with the gas, uh, with the petrol um, pump there. <laughs> All right, Gaston, like gas, think, gas, the gas pump. Yeah, yeah. I think she'll she'll be coming on just now. Afternoon, Sister Mugabe. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We we're just waiting for Sister Felicia. She phoned and she apologized because she says she doesn't know what happened with her phone. But I, um, I think she'll be on just now. So just give it a few minutes. Thank you for your patience. So I, I think I'm attending this meeting for the first time. Uh, is it daily or weekly? Pardon? Is it You've been on before. Or weekly? You've been on before, brother. I invited you on an another time. Okay. Is it uh, weekly or daily? It's a daily meeting. We meet... We meet every every day in the morning, um, from quarter to five in the morning until about half past six, and then we come on again in the afternoon. This time from, well, this is U UK time. I'm talking about from twelve o'clock to one o'clock, and then again oh, yeah. this evening at about, uh, I think it's six six o six o'clock to about eight o'clock every day. 
-hmm. And you're welcome to join every day if you can. Um, Premier committed. <laughs> I don't know the timing. What will be the timing? My timing. I am in Pakistan. What's What's your time right now? It's four twenty-four. Four twenty-four. Now here it yeah. is twelve twenty-four. Now here it's twelve. Well, twelve twenty-five p.m. So that will uh, mean uh, p.m. Yeah, the, I also have uh, four four twenty-five p.m. That mean I I'm a uh, four hour ahead of you. Yes. Yes. Okay. We're still waiting. I think she's struggling to come on. And uh, what what time the morning meeting is according to your time? Uh, quarter to five a.m. Okay, five. That means my timing will be nine, huh? Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, do you mind me singing? Do you want me to sing? Yes, please. You can sing. We're still waiting for her. She phoned me. She's having problems. Okay. Okay, I'm going to sing five to six. God send his They call him Jesus. He came to love. He let forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lived because he lived. I can first tomorrow because he lived. All the fear is gone because I know he was the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can first tomorrow. Because he lives, all the fear is gone. Because I know he was the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby. And feel the pride and joy, but great I still the calm assurance this child can face uncertainties because he lives, because he lives. I can first tomorrow because he lives. All oh, the fear is gone because I know he was the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. 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 Our sister's joining. Hopefully she can come through. Welcome, Sister Felicia. I don't know. 
Something's wrong with the. Sorry about that. Over to you, my sister. Over. We, we can have a, a quick word of prayer again. Father in heaven, we want to give you the thanks, the praise and the glory. Yes, sometimes technology doesn't work, but you are in control and you have a message for us today as we have waited and thank you for the, the, the saints that have had patience. May you continue to give us the patience that we all need. Now, as our sister breaks the bread of life with us, May we, may your Holy Spirit speak to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. It's over to you, my sister. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, my sister. Uh, can you confirm if you can hear me? Yes, yeah, you can, can hear, you. hear you. All right, all right. Thank you so much. I don't know what was happening with my devices. All of them were just misbehaving. But we thank God that I finally managed to connect. Uh, so at this moment in time, allow me to just rush into our presentation since we have run out of time. Um. So I'm trying to to connect to my to the presentation. I kindly con confirm if you can see my screen now. Yes, we can. Hello, kindly con you can see my screen. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So I'm going to to start to share the slides. Today we want to learn about uh, the title, I just entitled it to say, their God is culture and fashion. So basically we are going to be learning about uh, youth reform, that's about dress reform, that's what you are going to be learning. So if we can consider what is happening today, uh, the issue of dress reform is becoming more of a, a controversial issue, controversial issue in the Christian society or in the Christian community. Uh, many Christians today, they say that we, we dress the way we are dressing because I'm going to have these presentations uh, in, in series. So today I'm just going to have the part one of it. Then the next time we meet, when I get the the way we live is dictated by culture the way we live is only dictated by the word of god this is only our god and you only follow the word of 8 verse 20 says that's the law and the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them so we only get light from the word of god the bible and the bible alone should be the rule of life for the bible rules over all the cultures and fashion so when it when you're addressing the issue of dress uh it is also written in the bible So we want to learn to see how what is really uh, how 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 did so um, in the Bible originally when Adam and Eve were created they were not wearing any apparel why 
because they were few, where they were closed because they were seen as being they were uh, they were closed or they were filled with the glory of God and that was they are covering the glory of God. The issue of putting uh, this adornment, the apparel, only came after sin. So when we read from the book of um, Genesis chapter three verse seven to ten, it's it's speaking about uh, about Adam and Eve when they when they sinned against and fruit their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked so the they became naked how did they become naked the glory of god was removed from them the glory of god departed from them and they could see that they were naked so the nakedness was revealed as a result of sin so it is only sin which made us to be naked otherwise originally god did not uh god did not made us as people who, who were naked but he, he has clothed us with his own glory. It's when the glory of God departed from us that we were left as people who are naked and because of naked. So nakedness was brought by sin. And because um, we were naked, uh, these people now they were supposed to put on something to cover their nakedness. So our nakedness is as a, as a result of sin. So we are supposed to cover our body to cover that nakedness which came as a result of sin. So Adam and Eve, when they saw that they were naked, they stood, they took the fig leaves and made them the of aprons. So they tried to, to, to make their own clothes to cover the nakedness. And they hear the voice of God walking in the garden of the of the core of the day, trees of the garden. And the Lord God called Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? And he said, I hear thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid my son is naked. That person cannot stand in front in front of God. So we, when we when you present ourselves before we knew that because he is naked he cannot speak to god face to face he has come as a result of sin now because of sin adam and eve are now separated from god they are now running away from god because sin has separated them and also sin has brought nakedness to them so they try to cover themselves because they were naked and then what happened um because they were now naked we know whatever that happened god having a conversation with adam and eve uh giving them the punishment telling them now because sin has ended unto you and telling them the consequences of sin and after that uh, verse 21 says that genesis chapter 3 and adam also took an adam and unto Adam also and to his wife Eve did the Lord God made coats of skin and clothed them. So uh, uh, to cover the nakedness of these people, God made coats of skin to clothe them. So the cloth, Adam and Eve had made their own clothes of fig trees, but that those own clothes of fig trees were not able to cover their nakedness, right? Uh, so God had to make the cause of sin, and this cause they were able to cover the whole body. You know, when they were trying to make a clothing out of the fig trees, it was a red, it was a hard moment for them trying uh, uh, to to make leaves come together so that it can be a clothing. It was really, very really hard. And that type of clothing was not to cover the, the entire body. So they struggled in covering themselves, which only mean that when we are people of God, when we, when, we, when we have run away from God, when we have separated ourselves from God, we are not able to, to make ourselves righteous. We are not able to clothe ourselves with righteousness. We can struggle and we will not be able to reach the standard of righteousness. It's only God who should come and cover us with his own glory, with his own righteousness. So God yet to to make the coats of of, of skins so the, the these coats of skins were also covering their physical body. So God was clothing them to, to cover their nakedness. So uh, when, when God made the cost of skin, what what was the purpose? Uh, when it comes to dress, 
we are going to just learn about six principle dressing. So principle number one is that, that why? Because nakedness came a cause of the animal skin to cover the nakedness. So number one, it should provide warmth and it should, it, should, it should provide comfort. So when you read from the book of uh, child guidance, it says that special attention should be given to the extremities, that they should be as thoroughly closed as the chest and the region over the heart. Why is the greatest amount of heat? Parents who dress their children with the ex extremities naked or nearly so fashion. So the moment that we cover our body, we are, we are also doing it for the sake of our health, for our well-being. So when you are when you are covering our body, remember God made these cords. So cords could cover the whole body and could also cover the extremities. But when you see people when they dress today, they want to cover some parts of the body and leave some parts of the body. But God does not design clothing as such. Clothing should cover the whole body and they should also cover the extremities. Sometimes when people dress, they may leave the limbs and they may leave some parts of the body being exposed to coldness. But this is not what it should be. If these parts are not so warm as the body, the circulation is not equalized. So when you leave some other parts of the body being ex exposed as extremities, the, there won't be proper circulation of the of of the blood in the body when the extremities which are removed from the vessel are I think we've lost you, sister. We've 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 lost her. It's hearted. Whom I have filled with spiritual wisdom that they make Aaron's garments to consecrate him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So we are people, when we minister unto God, there is a certain apparel that we are supposed to put on. I read from the book of First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 that it says that but you are a royal, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. So right now, as you are living right now, we no longer have Aaron, but God now have his priests who are ministering unto them. And who are those priests? Us as his children, we are a chosen generation and we are a royal priesthood. So today we are supposed to clothe, to, to dress as priests. So the priests, they were dressing for beauty and for glory. Let's see. Let's see more. What does this really mean? What does it really mean to, to dress for beauty and for glory. So beauty, it means that what you, whatever that you are putting on, it should be neat. It should be neat, attractive, and clean, right? As Christians, we must, we must, not, we must not dress this up haphazardly just because we are children of God, but the dressing should be neat, attractive, and clean. Then what does it mean when you're saying for the glory? Glory, it means for the glory of God. We must dress for, God, for the glory of God. So when you read from the testament to the church, volume one, page five twenty four, it says that here yeah, God expressly commanded a very simple arrangement of dress for the children of Israel for the purpose of distinguishing them from the idolatrous nations around them. As they looked upon the peculiarity of dress, they were to remember that that they were God's commandment keeping people and that he had, he had wrought in a miraculous manner to bring them from Egyptian bondage to save them to be a holy people unto him. So 
we dress for glory of God. That the, the, the way we dress should distinguish us from the other nations. You should distinguish us from the worldly or from the heathens. As the children of God, there is a certain way we should dress. We should dress in a certain way that shows that we are the children of God. As the Christians, as the people who believe in God, we must not dress like the worldly. So we must dress for beauty and for glory to glorify our god whom we serve and people must see that these are the people of god they are distinct and they are separate in the way that we dress they might see that they must see that we are the people of god by the way we dress so the way we dress is also also show what we are glorifying whether we are glorifying god or we are glorifying satan so may god help us that whenever we choose dress we do it for beauty and for glory, it should be attractive and clean. The young should be encouraged to form correct habits in dress and their and that their prints may be neat and attractive. They should be taught to keep their garments clean and neatly mended. All their habits should be such as to make them a help and comfort to others. So our garments should always be clean and neatly and, and attractive. That's the principle here. At the same time, provide the becoming garments appropriate for age and station in life. So you must know that who are you and what are you dressing for uh as as a as a young girl maybe who is 18 years may not dress as a woman who's who is 60 years so this principle is just guiding us to know that you must put on an apparel which is appropriate for your age My We can't hear anything, Sister Felicia. I think a network is breaking up. Um, I can't hear anything either from yeah. Australia. I think the her network must be giving her problems. Yep. Mm. right we must dress our dress must be in contrast with the prevailing fashion so a person who dress modestly does not follow fashion you know people who follow fashion they say that if uh, now in fashion this thing is introduced they they run after this thing and next time the other things they run after this thing so they they there are some people who follow after fashion but as people of god we are not to be people who are running after fashion but our guiding principle is the word of God. We must put on sensible dress, which is neat and simple, which is modesty, which shows that we are the children of God. Modesty means showing or having moderate or humble estimate of one's merits or importance. So when you have someone who is dressing modestly, it shows humility that you are someone who is, who is humble, who is self-sacrificing. Principle number four is simple and not costly. We should put on apparel which is simple and, and not costly. We get it from the same verse, 1 Timothy 2, verse 9, when it says that in like manner also that women 
adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided ye or gold or pearls or costly array. I have left the, the phrase which is saying not with braided ye or gold or pearls because it's another subject, but focusing on clothing. Our clothing must not be costly. We must not dress with costly array or costly apparel. So as as as, as the children of God, we must we must know that um money must not be much we must not spend too much money in buying clothes because that money that we spent in running after fashion in buying very expensive clothes that money we, we are supposed to use it uh in in um in caring for the needs of the poor there are many people who are perishing many people who are dying in sin instead of us spending too much money on clothing it is good for us that we spent um, our, our money uh, in addressing the needs of other people who are poor. So we must not uh, spend too much money in costly apparel for this is not what God uh, wants from us. He just wants to be simple and to put on clothes that are not costly. Uh, you know that uh, there are some people who say who may say that uh, I want to put on clothes which which cost one thousand US dollars, but you know that this, uh, you can still buy of a clothes which may be about ten dollars or twenty dollars, which may be cheaper than that. So I'm just saying that a spirit of God, let let us be good stewards in the way that you are using our money. Let us not uh, spend too much of it in in buying costly apparel or on uh, some other things for our selfish gratifications then in principle number five our clothes must not must be loose enough or they must not be not too tight a uh, point of correction here for for the spelling is it must be not too tight no too tight clothing or loose enough right from the book of child guidance page 425 says that the body should be con should not be constricted right the dress should fit easily when you are dressing your dress should fit easily obstructing neither the circulation of the blood or free foul natural respiration the feet should be suitably protected from cold and damp clad in this way we can take excess in the open air even in the dew of morning or evening or after a fall of rain or snow without fear of taking cold there's some people who love to put on tight clothes that the blood will be uh, the blood circulation will be obstructed and there will be no free, free circulation of, of blood. So as Christians, we must desist from that. Our clothing must not be that tight. They must be loose enough. Tight bands or raised hinder the action of the heart and lungs and should be avoided. No part of the body should, should at any time be made uncomfortable by clothing that compresses any organ or restricts its freedom of movement. The clothing of all children should be loose enough to admit of the freest and fullest respiration and so arrange that the shoulders would support its weight right so uh, the what should what um should um support the weight of clothes the weight of clothes should be supported by the shoulders there are many ladies who when they put clothes they think that uh the weight of a cloth must be supported by the hips but this is not what it should be the shoulders are supposed to be the ones which support the weight of your clothing so we must not put our too much pressure on our hips or on our waist because when you do that uh that that tightening of that tightening of um of the body uh will also hinder the action of our of the heart and lungs and issue it, it will also restrict the blood flow so it must be it must be avoided there are some people who like to put tight bands or waists right putting something tight on our hands or on our waist that must be avoided because it restricts blood flow right uh here is a doctor a old doctor uh who is not an adventist who just wrote uh an advice to women and you are saying that if you are like most women in america you have probably worn shapewear you know what you call the shapewear of some type of skinny jeans some dresses of uh, any any type of dress that shape your body and uh, most of them, some some of them would be the skinny jeans. We all love the secret of having all the desires, the desirable lumps, bumps, and curves controlled with the compre compression of these garments. What we don't always consider or even realize is the potential effect they can have on our veins. The compression factor from clothing is mild, but they can squeeze enough to restrict blood flow. The tightness of these garments reduces blood's ability to flow into and out of the legs. 
this restriction can lead to pulling of blood in the legs, which can lead to acne, swelling, and varicose veins. Also, the excess pressure on the veins can cause them to dilate and become leaky, leaky or bulge through the skin. For areas where varicose veins already exist, that extra pressure can cause these veins to further dilate and bulge. So we see uh, what this doctor is saying. It is this article uh, of the Lamphascular and Associates ask Dr. Wishnu, does tight clothing cause varicose veins? So he's, he's just saying that when you put on tight clothing, those tight clothing, they actually uh, contribute what? to the varicose veins for they put extra pressure on the veins and uh, causing the, the, the our veins to further dilate and bulge. And many diseases can uh, come out as a result of that, of putting, because many people, they, because they say that we have beautiful bodies, we want to shape our bodies so that they can be seen that we are beautiful. We want to, all those desirable, we want all those, uh, all, all those caves and, and bumps to be shown, right? Or maybe sometimes you want to cover those undesirable lumps and bumps. But whatever it may be, that when we are putting our body, which, which is compressing our body, any clothes that compress our body is not good because the, there is a great harm uh, which is, which is uh, squeezing or, or restricting the blood flow. So tight clothes, must be a no to a Christian, and we must not put on clothes that that is shaping that is shaping our body or that is exposing our form, because this is what it's not supposed. Or this is not what is supposed to be. Then principle number six, the last principle that I have wrote here, is clear distinction of danger or, or of gender. When you read from the book of Jerem chapter twenty verse five, say that they shall not, they sh the woman shall not wear the that which pertains unto men, neither shall a man put on that which pertains that put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination to the Lord thy God. So here, uh, the principle that you are learning from this verse is that they must only be what clear clear distinction. If you are a woman, just put on what that which pertains to woman. And if you are a man, just put on that which pertains to men. When the Bible was written in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, here, the Israelites, there were no trousers being worn. Some people may say that um, uh, we, we cannot use this face to say women must not wear trousers. It is true that contextually, uh, when this this verse was not referring to trousers because during that time people were not wearing trousers yet but all of them they were wearing robes but though they were wearing robes they we could uh, 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 dist we could clearly distinct or uh, clearly separate from what is women's way and what is what is men's way so this principle uh it it is a principle that I will also need to that you also need to have a further discussion and further study so on my next presentation i'm going to focus on the issue of uh, clear distinction of gender of what 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 should women wear and what should men wear and um, and also answering the question which many people have to say should women wear trousers in that presentation i think i will be able also to address to address that issue but for now this marks the end of our presentation I don't know if there are any contributions from the floor before we pray. Yes, yeah, I just um, I, see. I just I just had a question, sister, about yeah, you read um, I'm not sure it was Alan White um, quote, but uh, attract we should dress attractive. Who? Yes, I don't understand. I don't understand who who. Who are we trying to attract? Who are we trying to attract? Okay, who are we trying to attract? Yeah, it, it just, right. uh, I think two, two or three times you read, read um, we should dress attractively in an attractive yes. manner, uh, way, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's, it's okay. Let, let me go to, to the quotation here so that we take it again from there uh, yeah it is neat attractive clean the young should be encouraged to form correct habits in dress that their appearance may be neat and attractive they should be taught to keep their garments clean and neatly mended all their habits should be such as to make them a help 
and comfort to others. So here, the principle is the, the type of dread that we should put, it should be neat and at the same time, at the same time attractive so the attractiveness is that uh, people must see that this is good apparel not in a way that uh, you are being you are being glorified as yourself so the the, the, the way we dress is it must not be for self gratification or for self glorification but you know that your appearance when you appear to people they must see that the way you are dressing is good and appropriate. So the attractiveness part of it also comes to the fact that you know that our lives as Christians, the way we present ourselves, it should attract people so that they come to worship our God whom we worship. So in the, in this, right? So in this same quotation also comes the principle that, you know, when you are someone is dressing modestly, you are, you are wearing your, your upper, which is covering the whole body, but that upper you are, you are putting also, it's not attractive because you just dressed, dressed um, haphazardly, or you, you, are, you, you did not put great care and caution on, on, on the way you, you are dressing yourself. So it should be proper neat and attractive that people must see that this is a this is a, a a man of god a woman of god right so it means that you must not put on junk on our body because we are representing christ so the attractive part of it is that we are actually representing christ to the world so people must see that this is a child of god by the way we dress it should be uh, attractive in the sense not not attraction for for self but attraction for the glory of god yeah, I, I don't right. know if maybe others may also assist if they have another understanding. Yeah. So men, so men shouldn't sort of wear white pants, things like that. No, men, men shouldn't wear white pants. You think or white, you know, pure white pants. What do you think about that? Pure, pure white I don't, pants. I, I don't, I, I don't know whether it's my ego or, or not, but I do feel better when I'm dressing in lighter coloured colours, but um. Yeah, I don't know whether it's part of my, you know, it could be a little bit of ego possibly. I, I don't, I, I just feel be better, but I feel more, I don't know, just, yeah, just more confident. But, yeah, if that's the ego, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 all right, all right. It's okay. Thank you so much. So uh, when, when you are wearing, you're saying white shorts, right? White pants? Yeah, yeah, you know, like very white, bright. Yeah, is that is that what Christians should wear? Like it just white, very bright colours. I just I don't know whether it's just you know my ego or, um, you know I feel I just feel more more better, like more confident. But maybe yeah, I don't know what it is. So the truth. Does it mean you you be wearing white always, always in white, always in bright colour, or? I I no, I mean I do prefer the brighter colours. Yeah, I mm. it just seems to make. I don't know, make make me feel more, um, how can I put it, um, just, you know, more feeling, you know, just better, more, yeah, just more, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I understand <laughs> that, that you 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 have your your confidence the the self esteem is boosted but what you by what you be wearing right uh personally i don't think there is a problem when the motive is right what is what important what is important is what is the motive behind some people when they are dressing putting on those bright colors they do it to draw attention so, so that people may see me that i am here if you have such such a spirit in the heart when you are dressing that's then it's not a good spirit we must right. dress uh, so to glorify god so the, the 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 issue of wanting to present yourself as appropriate um when you uh, there's also an, another quotation that uh that i was reading here also which was which was uh, which was talking about about that as well which was saying that uh provide becoming provide becoming garments appropriate for age and station in life, right? So when you are an accountant, right? You dress like an accountant, then you, you follow the principles in the word of God on the way you dress, at the same time dressing like an accountant. When you are, when you are a doctor, dress like a doctor, but following what? 
the principles which are in the word of God. So as long as you are following all these in principles in the way you are dressing, then it's okay. Then the motive must not be so that people will see me, but it the motive must always be to glorify God. So the, the principle that is also very important that you'll be guided or is for, for the glory of God and for the beauty. The beauty also is the beauty of God. All the glory must be must be given to God. Yes. Yeah, because sometimes they, you know, like they, they can be a little bit tight, even for men, if, if men are wearing tight around the, mm. you know, the, the you know, around around the body, that's no good either. It, you know, it, it goes for men as well and not just women, yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah. you know, showing off too much too much of their um yeah, private private parts and whatever, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, th I think we also addressed that on when we're saying that our clothing must not be too tight. They must not um like expose the body. At the same time, they must not leave the extremities, other essential parts parts of the body being exposed. Both some some men also they want to wear the shorts exposing the limbs and other parts of the body, which is not appropriate as well. So we must remember that uh, clothing we we dress for covering the body. The, which is yeah. the sanctuary of God at the same time for beauty and for glorifying God. So we, we must always bear that in mind. So whether you are a man or a woman, the issue of tight fitting, uh, um, it, it is addressed to all genders. All of us, we must yeah. never put on anything that is tight because it will affect even the blood circulation. Uh, so Ashraf, you had a hand? Yeah, oh, sorry. I just want I just wanted to say that uh, if the, you're wearing something which is acceptable to your society, that is okay. If there is a custom like bright colors, the people wear it and people does not pay attention to you. So that's okay. Okay, like uh, in Pakistan, some church, most of the churches, most of the churches, they remove shoes outside of the church. Ladies cover their head. It's necessary. But if you go to the Western churches, oh, they don't care about that, wearing shoes or um, uh, covering their head. But that is the custom here. So people actually respect the ladies who, wear, who cover their heads. People who actually take shoes into the churches, people does not like that. So it's a custom. So when I talk about the custom, whether that dress, but but can whatever kind of dress you are wearing, that is yes. acceptable to the society, should be wearing that. The second thing is, do not men should not wear in the Bible in Isaiah. It very clear tells us that men should not wear the ladies' clothes and ladies should yes. not wear the clothes. So if we are doing that way, that is not acceptable to the Lord. I'm not talking about the people, but that is not acceptable to the Lord even. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much for that point. And uh, on the issue of culture, uh, if we are culture, of dress is not in contradiction to the word of god then it's okay you can follow it like the issue of saying of saying yes. women must veil their heads when they are coming to church if that thing is not contradicting with any scripture then there is no problem in following the culture so we are saying that the culture must not rule over the bible but the bible must rule over the culture so whatever the dressing that is being dictated by your culture go to the word of god and see if this this way of dressing according to culture is not in contradiction to the principles in the word of god then if they are in harmony then go ahead but if they are not in harmony then there comes a problem that you, that's where you are supposed to distinct yourself to say to be separate to show that i'm not a worldly person but am a child of god i dress in the way which please god not in the way which pleases the customs or the traditions of men so we should always bear in mind that what should be the rule and guide to our life when it comes to dressing are the principles which are in the word of God. So the culture must not be in the forefront, but the Bible itself must be the rule and guide to life. Amen.
agree sister that's Amen. very good yes thank you so much do we still have anyone with comments or questions um yeah okay. I wanted, sorry yes i wanted to say mm. to brother stephen when you were saying white um yes there is white material but it mustn't be sort of like a see-through because you get some some material that's see-through and yes um, that's right. that everything so as long as it's it's not to see through to 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 show things and also um as my sister was saying it, the attractive it's not to attract uh, other people to you but it's a to attract God, uh, people to show that this is a godly person because yes. um, uh, because the thing is if if it's attracting people because you you want people to to come to you then that's wrong but if it's attractive mm. Uh, showing that God is the one that rules my life. And when people see you, they say, oh, that is, that is a Christian. Because um, I was listening to to somebody on, I think was it on YouTube and all that, and was saying that uh, before our, uh, before all this has happened in our church, you could tell who was a, a Seventh-day Adventist and who wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist. But now mm. you, you, you can't really tell who is a, Adventist or not, because now some of some of our people in the church are dressing oh, like the world. So you can't really so you can't really tell now anymore who is uh, um, on what church do they belong to, and and I mean like when we look at uh, sometimes we we see the um, um, the the there's this church I can't remember what it's called, but anyway when you see them. They two by two, and you know this this is the certain church. So this is the way we should be as well to say, oh, this is Adventist people. Yeah, thank you. That's all what I wanted to say. No, thanks, I, sister. Paul, Paul make it very clearly about this dress, and that is moderate dress. That yes. means it should not offending other people. People should not be looking at you as center of something. Not, yes. not yes. that people attract to you. Oh, he is wearing very expensive clothes. So this should not be happening. Moderate. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, if there are no any other comments or questions, maybe we can pray. And let us pray to our kind and heavenly Father. We thank you, God, for your love and for your mercies upon our lives. We thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for your presence in the Holy Spirit who is ministering unto us. We thank you for provision and for protection that you give unto us each and every time. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity that you've given us to learn from your word, to learn about the principles of dress reform. Lord, may you help us, Lord, that we may be able, may be people who are always um, referring to your word, Lord, when you are choosing any apparel, when you are buying clothes, Lord, may you help us, Father, to be guided by your word, not by our own thinking, not by our own cultures, or not by the fashion, but by the word of God. Let the Holy Spirit come and live and dwell within us and be the one who leads and guides us and points us to the way we should live and points us to the way we should dress. Let the Holy Spirit always speak to us in our conscience so that you always make the right decisions. May you help us, Lord, that as we live, Father, we may be people who are distinct, who are separate from the world. You help us, Father, not to conform to the worldly fashions and designs, but always to stand as people who are principled, who are separate, who are distinct, who are waiting for the soon coming of our Savior. May you help us, Father, to be our to be good examples to the people in society so that they can see Christ in us. May you help us, Father, to uh, to be attractive to people so that they may be able to see Christ in us even by the way we appear, by the way we present ourselves. And when everything has been done and said, let all the glory and honor be given unto you. May you also help us not to be people who are putting the outward adornment only of uh, clothing, but also let our hearts also be the hearts where, where Christ resigns, where Christ rules, so that all the glory will be given unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very Amen. much, my sister. Uh, we're going to go into our prayers now. Um, 
I have um, praise and thanksgiving. I've got Psalm 104. Does someone want to take that one up for us, please? Yes, I'll take that, sister. Okay, thank Stephen. you, brother Stephen. And then confession, uh, I've got Ephesians 6, verse 14 and 15. If someone wants to take that one up for us, please. Yes, I can take it. Okay, thank you, sister Felicia. And then I've got the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 33, 15 and 16. I'll do that one. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I will order of prayer, uh, Brother Stephen, Sister Felicia, yes. and the Holy Spirit is myself. Yes, sorry, what, what was my um script what was my scripture for uh, um Thanksgiving? And four. Uh, which one? Uh, one and two. Some 104 verse one and two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a minute for, for ourselves and then we'll, we'll start with Brother Stephen. Amen. 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 Yeah, this is um prayer for um praise and um what was it praise and what was the other part? Sorry. Praise and thanksgiving. Sorry. Oh yes, yes. Sorry. Praise and thanksgiving. Uh, Psalm one hundred and four, one one and two. In the King James version says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, Thou art very, very great." Thou art clothed with honour and majesty. Who covereth thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain? Heavenly Father, we uh, praise you. And um, just for life, uh, the breath of life every morning, Lord, um, help us to realise how fortunate we are and that you've given us protection overnight and just have that breath of life and help us, Lord, um, yeah, to search, search your, your scriptures early, first thing in the morning, Lord, so we don't get distracted and, and pray and do our prayers before, before the rush of the day um, can get, get the better of us. Um, and that, that way, unfortunately, Lord, we, we usually misrepresent you if we don't start off with praise and thanksgiving. Um, yeah, help us to realize and not just take our, our lives for granted, Lord, and and um, yeah, help us to really respect you and um, and help us to realize we we pray, Lord, um, yeah, for all, all your um, blessings that you do give us, and help us to focus on the positives and not not our past, and not not go into any self pity parties or regrets. On the way, you know, we could have done something different, but because that, that's just Satan. So we pray, Lord, that um, you help us all to be positive and um, praise you more and more, because that way we take take away the uh, focus off ourselves and put put it rightly on on you, Lord, and um, your glory in Jesus. And um, please bless us all with your your beautiful, small, still voice, your Holy Spirit, and help us to um, be always mindful of that during the day, and to to um, yeah, so we can um, be be guided and um, yeah, glorify your your name in Jesus Christ's loving name. Amen. 
Amen. First John 1, verse 9. If we confess our sin, his faith ventures to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we come before your throne in this afternoon. We thank you for your love and for your mercies. We thank you, O oh God, because you have said that we must come boldly before the throne of grace, that you may find grace in the time of need. We, are, we don't hesitate to come before your throne. We know that, Lord, we are sinners, Father. We have separated ourselves from you through many ways. You have said in a way that my hand is not sure that it will not touch you, neither my, my ear close that it cannot hear you. But your sins have separated me from me and your iniquity. Lord, we come in, Lord, we are sorrow for sin. We forsake all our sins when they say, we are saying, Lord, we are sorry. Wherever we have failed, Lord, wherever we have failed to represent you, wherever we have separated ourselves from you, Lord, wherever, Father, we have indulged in sin, in, in selfish um, gratifications, in lustful patience, Lord, may you forgive us, Lord. As we come in, humble ourselves, Father, at this moment in time, be merciful unto us, Lord. May you forgive us all our sins, pardon our iniquity, cleanse us from all, from all the defilements, blot out all our transgressions, glad meet your own righteousness, Father, and make us to walk in your holy ways. Fill us with your glory, Father, clothe us with your beauty, with your righteousness and your holiness. Yeah, the Lord who is faithful, the Lord who is good, the Lord who endures forever. Lord, you have said in your word from the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 14, to say that sins shall not have dominion over you, for you are no longer under law, but under grace. We thank you, Lord, because the law condemns us that we are sinners, but through grace you have enabled, you have forgiven us all our sins, and you have given us the power to live a life of righteousness. So we are only able to keep your law because of your grace which is upon us. At this moment in time, Father, enable us and empower us by your grace to live a life of holiness, to follow your law, to be obedient to your law, to be to, to be children of righteousness, Jehovah. Father, help us, Father, not to follow our own ways or our own thinking, but help us, Father, to live according to your word. You have said in your way that blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimony is that um, seeking with the whole heart. They also do not iniquity. They walk in his ways. May Lord we want this blessing of forgiveness of sins. We want this blessing of righteousness. We want this blessing, Father, of, the, of being people who reflect your image to your people. When we live in this world, Father, we are saying that may, we want to be to live as people who are spotless and who are blameless. We don't want to have any stain on our garments. But may you clothe us, Father, with the with the, with the garment of Christ, the, the Christ righteousness, Lord. That as we live, we may reflect your image. We know that you are waiting with a long desire for the manifestation of your character in your people. When the when your character, Lord, is fully produced in your people, then you come and claim as your own. We know that you are coming to take people who are sinless. Father, may you help us to be sinless now. It is not time that we should indulge into sin. It is time that we should stop sinning. We are not able to stop sinning by our own strength, but it is only the grace of God which is which can enable us. Which, which can empower us to live a sinless life. Help us now, our Savior. We come, Father, in our weakness, in our infirmities. Help us, Father, O Lord, God, to forsake all our sins and to live a life of righteousness and life of holiness because you are the Lord who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of God. Help us, O Lord, our Savior. Let Christ come and live within us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Let only Christ be the one who live. Let only Christ be the one who be seen. Let only Christ be the one who speak. Let only Christ be the one who think in us. Let it be Christ who live within us through it, until eternity. Abamaka Naka, you are the Lord who is faithful and great. We praise your name and we thank you, O Lord. Bless us. Remove sin from our body. Remove sin from our hearts. Remove sin from our minds. And make us to be people who are righteous all in all. Let clothe us with your righteous Father. And may you make us to be perfect, pure, because we are your children. We thank you, God, for hearing our prayer let your name be glorified and be honored forever in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 shall we continue in prayer for the holy spirit isaiah 33 verse 15 and 16 says he that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly he that despiseth the gain of oppressions that shaketh his hands 
from holding off bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high, his place and defense shall be shall be the mantuans of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure. May the Lord add a blessing upon his word. Father in heaven, we pray for the for your Holy Spirit to help us to, to walk righteously in all our ways, that you may go before us and go with us, dear Father. We have wandered away from you for so long. We pray that you may draw us closer to you. We cannot draw close to you unless the Holy Spirit is our guide. So we pray for your Holy Spirit to show us, to guide us into all truth. And while we are here walking on earth, Lord, you said, go ye therefore and take this word out. We also pray for the work of evangelism because we know time is short. May we work while it is day. As night is coming when no man shall work, Father, it's only the Holy Spirit that can be our guide. So we pray for your Holy Spirit to be our guide now and always. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, there's there's mm. other uh, oh dear trying to press um, off the recording um, so we can continue with a, a few uh, uh, prayers anybody's got a, a request can just pray just one or two minutes Father in heaven, we want to bring the sick and bereaved at this time. We have so many on our prayer list that are not feeling well. Others are in hospitals, others in care homes. We bring the, them to you that you may touch them and heal them. When you were here on earth, Lord, you, whoever came to you, you touched and healed them. We pray for the bereaved that you may be with them. Um, comfort them in, this, in these sad times. When, uh, when their loved ones are laid to sleep. Give them the hope that they will see their loved ones again. If they died in Christ, they will be resurrected again to be with you, and there will be no more death, no crying, no sorrow. So, Lord, we've got this hope in, in you that as we walk here on earth, we will have trials and temptations all around us, but we pray and leave everything in your hands. So I want to... Uh, also give you the thanks for this prayer group, for each person that has gathered here this, the, this morning and afternoon. Um, and thank you for the patience that each one has had. Sometimes the technology is not on our side, but Lord, you came through for us. We pray for our loving sister who has give, uh, broken the bread of life about dress reform. May you continue to use her in, in her ministry. May you use each and every one of us that the words that we hear, dear Lord, may we carry them out. May we be able to dress appropriately. May we not um, um, dress the way we want to dress. May we leave the world behind and sort your face in everything that we do and say, eat or drink. May it be to your glory. So this afternoon, as we separate, go our separate ways, dear Lord, I pray that you may... Uh, that we may not go away from, from you, but uh, go before us and go with us throughout this day. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you very much, everyone, that has taken part. And sorry for going over time. Technology was not on our side, but um, our loving sister was able to join us. Okay, take care and God bless everyone. Bye for now. Thanks, sister. You did very well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise yes, God. Amen. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Take yes. care. Yes.